Welcome everyone to Arise Family Church, where we help people find life, enjoy life, and win in life. We've been on a series called Shaking 2020-2021, Shaking. What is the shaking all about? And so we started the series. I'm going to recap quickly because this is going to be, we're going to finish off tonight. And so we started off talking about two timeless truths that we must of necessity remember all the time. And so the first one was in James 1, verses 12 to 17. And we found out um, in, in those verses that God does not tempt us with evil. Amen? Uh, so, so He does test us, but He doesn't tempt us with evil. So the test, God tests us to promote us and to give us life and the promises. Satan tempts us. He tempts us with evil. And his purpose is to bring death. And then every good gift and every perfect gift comes from God. He's the giver of everything good. Amen? So that's our first timeless truth from this portion of Scripture. And then John 10.10 10 says, Satan has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. This, this is what he does. This is his DNA. This is his fingerprints. If we find, if we find these things, it reveals to us who's been there. And who's functioning and operating. This is Satan is the one who's come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. This whole pandemic is a, 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 an attack of the devil is what it is. Because it's come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I have come to give you life and life more abundantly. That phrase more abundantly means super abundantly. It means excessively. It means beyond measure. It means superior in quality. We must, we must remember this. God and the devil have never changed spots. Satan is not out to do anybody any good at any time. And if there is ever an inkling that he wants to give something, there's so many strings attached, and the end, other end of those strings is death, because he's come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I've come. Why have you come, Jesus? To give you life. Life more abundantly, excessively, beyond measure, superior in quality. That's the way it is. Glory to God. And so what about 2020 and 2021? Hebrews 12, verses 25 to 29, we found out, do not refuse him and what he says. Do not refuse him and what he says. And God, God is letting us know, listen, pay attention to me and what I have said. He said, he said, there's a shaking. Why is there a shaking, Father? There's a shaking to remove and to reveal. The purpose of the shaking is to remove and to reveal. To remove the things that can be shaken. But also to reveal the things that remain. To reveal the things that cannot be shaken. We found out three things that, that is revealed in this portion of Scripture that um, shall remain. His unshakable right way of doing things what or who to hold fast to, and number three, what or who to serve. And then we went to Haggai chapter 2, and he talks about shaking. Why the shaking? So we're comparing these two, working these two together. Why the shaking? Asking the same question. We found out that number one, it's to get people's eyes on the answer. There's a shaking. When there's a shaking, you look for help. Amen? Amen. You, you, you look for a way out of the shaking, onto solid ground, stable ground, a sure foundation. So it is to reveal, to get people's eyes on the answer, His name is Jesus. Glory to God. And also to fill His house with glory and, and peace, wealth and wholeness, nothing missing, nothing broken. So it's, it's to, to, to get people's eyes on Him, but it's also for Him to begin to now manifest and demonstrate Himself in glory and peace, or glory and shalom. Glory to God. And then we read, uh, verses 9 to 10, that they looked for increase like normal, like every other year, but God had to let or allow it to be blown away. Why? Because His kingdom functions and operates uh, by law and order and is upheld by justice. So he said, I had to allow it to be blown away because of what? He said, because my house, the temple, was in ruins, wasted and depopulated. In other, in other words, the, the, the people 
neglected, devalued, and did not prioritize the house of God, the temple of God, uh, the, the purpose and the reason that they were actually sent back to Jerusalem. So God said, listen, I, I called for a drought. And then he said in Haggai 2, verse 17, yet you did not turn to me. I called for a drought. And yet, yet you, you didn't turn to me to find out how to get out. You didn't turn to me for the answers. You, 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 didn't, you didn't turn to me. Because the moment you turn to me, I'm able to provide answers. Wisdom, direction, to get out, to help. But you, you didn't even turn to me. And he said, so I, I had to allow, once again, I had to allow, because you didn't turn to me, I had to allow the devil to smite and attack you. He didn't want that. He wanted, the, he wanted, he wanted to, to help the people get out, but they didn't turn to him. Why is there a shaking? He's wanting to get people's eyes focused on him. They wa he wants them to turn to him so he can bring us out. Turn is another way to say repent. Why? Because repent means to turn around and change our thinking. So God had to allow some things because the people would not repent and change the way they were thinking. They were con uh, considering themselves and their plans more valuable than God's assignment on their lives and why they were there. So I said it's time to wake up, body of Christ. Our life and our nation depends on it. It's time to wake up. And then we, we, we stepped over into the book of Daniel. We found out that Daniel found himself in a place, a unique position, an unwanted position, a position that he did not plan for. Jerusalem was besieged. Um, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon took over and, and then just took some of them captive. Some of the, the, the young men took them to Babylon made the choice that he was going to put them in, in his schools for three years and, and begin to mold the way they think. In other words, he wasn't necessarily happy with the way they thought. So he was going to change the way they thought so they could work for him and, and be effective in, in his way of doing things in his country. And we found out that this is what the devil's been trying to do. This is what he's been doing. He's trying to do it through television shows, media, games, movies, public school education on all levels, social media. He's trying to, to, to manipulate the minds of people. He's trying to change the way people think. He's trying to get them off of God's Word and onto a twisted way of thinking. A twisted way of thinking. For example, gender issues. It's really not hard to figure out. Every time we have a bath or a shower and you stand in front of the mirror, it, you, 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 your body reveals what gender we are. There's, there's no confusion about it. Many years ago, this may be a little graphic, many years ago, there was a movie called Kindergarten Cop. Kindergarten Cop. There was, there was a, a statement made by one of the kindergartners that was designed to be uh, um, uh, uh, a statement that made people go, what? You said that on the movie? But, but it's true. And it's a fact. And if people would understand this, Today, there'd be no confusion. But they have put people into teaching positions. They have, they have, they have taken people in um, the, 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 the college and university training places that teach the people that are going to be teachers. So they mess with them. And then they go back and mess with our children. This child made this very clear, standing, looking at Arnold Schwarzenegger, who was pretending to be the kindergarten teacher as a police officer, looking for the bad guy, but he's undercover. The little guy said, his dad's a doctor. He said, 
Boys have penises, girls have vaginas. And everybody laughed. That's as simple as it is. Simple, simple, Simon. Simple as it is. No confusion. It's the way it is. The devil is trying to do to us and our children and our society what Nebuchadnezzar was trying to do to those young people. Put them in my schools for three years so I can change the way you think. And if I can change the way you think, I can change the way you live. But we see in Daniel chapter 1, verse 8, the Bible says, But Daniel purposed in his heart not to defile himself. Not to defile himself. So he may have gone through the schooling and pulled the things out that actually um, were beneficial, but anything that contradicted the word of the living God, he threw away. He chose not to defile himself. And then we went on to 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17. It says, judgment begins at the house of the Lord. What, 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 what does that mean? That means we need to pass the test. Well, what kind of a test? Well, we saw three, three examples. Chronicles 12, 17, David asked a, a group of people came to him and he said, have you come peaceably to help me? And they answered, we are are on your side. John 6, verse 67, Jesus preached a, an amazing message. And a bunch of people ran off and decided that they weren't going to follow anymore. And he turned to his disciples and said, you want to go too? And in essence, they said, no, we're on your side. Elijah said to the people of Israel, how long are you going to falter between two opinions? Meaning, choose a side. Choose a side who you're going to serve. Amen? There's a shaking going on in order to remove and to reveal, the Scripture says. And it's not only about removing the things, it's about removing the words, but, uh, things and words, but it's about, it's about removing them, the people that have taken these words. The people that have taken words that are not the Word of God words, they will be removed because they are on shaky ground. The, the, them that are to have taken His Word are standing on solid ground and they will be revealed. Amen? To remove and to reveal. It will be, re it will be revealed who was standing on God's side because they shall be remaining. It will be revealed who's not on God's side because they will be removed. Hallelujah. So we talked about passing the test. To fail the test means that someone has moved off, stepped off, chosen not to believe the Word of God and not trust God. But to pass the test means that we have chosen to trust God and to believe His Word and to be a doer of His Word. Amen? And so pressure reveals what's on the inside of us, not just what we say. We can say one thing and do another. We can say one thing and believe something else. And so Jesus, uh, Jeremiah called them hypocrites. Hypocrites. Uh, you say one thing and do another. Um, and Jesus said, you look good on the outside, but on the inside... You're full of dead man's bones. You're, you, you know, you uh, not good. Uh, Mark chapter 7, Jesus said it this way, You honor me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. He was quoting Isaiah. And so the test is to see who is on the Lord's side, and not just those who say they're on the Lord's side. Right? Jesus uh, talked about people that would come to him and say, Lord, 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 Lord. And he said, why, why do you call me Lord? I don't even know you. I don't even know you. And so we finished last week with John chapter 14 where we saw these, these, four, um, these four statements, these four um, uh, uh, points that were brought out. He said repeatedly, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my word. So if you love me, keep my words. Don't be afraid. 
I'm coming back. Hallelujah. And it was just a uh, um, uh, hallelujah time. Amen. He's coming back. Glory to God. He's not forsaken us, and He will not forsake us. Amen. He's coming back. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so, today we want to talk about, we'll finish up, we want to talk about winning. Winning. Let's go back to Daniel. Daniel. Hallelujah, Daniel. Now we see here, we saw in verse 8, it says that Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. And then we see verse 9, so let's just finish, continue with verse 8. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's delicacies, uh, his, his meats, his, uh, what he was uh, giving uh, them, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now God had brought Daniel into favor. Say favor. Favor. Favor is a result of our choosing to, to be on God's side. Okay, so what I want us to see as we go through this, I want us to see that these things apply to us. If we choose that we're not going to defile ourselves, we, we choose to stand on God's side. We choose to stand on His Word. We choose to believe Him. We're on your side, Lord. Hallelujah. No matter what the shaking is, we're on your side. We, 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 we're on your Word side. We're on the Word side. We're on Lord's side. Well, this is what we believe. This is what we do. We love you. We keep your words. We refuse to fear. And thank you. You're coming back. Hallelujah. And so, these are some of the results. Winning is the result of our being on the Lord's side. Why? Because He's the winner. Carmen came out with a song called Champion uh, decades ago. And... Uh, uh, the, whole, the whole theme or the premise of it was a whole boxing theme. And Jesus came in the ring and the devil came into the ring and they had this fight. And then the Bible, uh, then uh, uh, Carmen says that, that prophetically Jesus' hands came down and Satan knocks him out. And, and uh, then God, as the, the, um, the judge, he was coming in and uh, he was going to do the three count. The three count, once the three count is done, it's over. And, and God began to count, and, and he, but, but he started counting different. He didn't go one, two, three. You're out. No, he counted by saying 10, 9, 8. He started counting down. And the devil said, you're counting wrong. You're counting wrong. That's not how you count. God counts however he wants to count. He's counting because he's a winner. He's counting victory. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Jesus won. Jesus is alive. He rose from the dead. Amen? Hallelujah. The devil's defeated. Jesus spoiled principalities and powers and made a show of them openly. He's a defeated foe. He's a nothing. He's a not. And he's afraid. Because he knows his time is short. And God is laughing, the Bible says. He's laughing because he knows his days are short. Hallelujah. And so, we're talking about winning because we are standing on the winner's side. We're with the winner. We believe the winner. We do winner stuff. Amen? We think like winners because we're winners. We're in Christ. We're seated with Him in heavenly places. Glory to God. And so winning. We want to talk about winning. This is what we do. We find favor. God brought Daniel into favor and goodwill of the chief of the eunuchs. And the chief of the eunuchs said to Daniel, I said, I'm afraid if, if I don't give you you know, this stuff, and, and you start looking, looking bad, the king's going to say, what's been going on? And then I'm going to tell him, well, they didn't want to eat this stuff, and he's going to chop my head off. Uh, he'll kill me. And so Daniel said, okay, let's just, can we do a 10-day test? Just give us vegetables, give us sowing stuff. So give us uh, uh, vegetables, uh, this kind of stuff. And, and after 10 days, you be the judge. 
You know, if, if we look bad, then, then, you know, we look scraggly and we are not healthy, then, uh, you know, I don't want to put your life at stake. So, so then we'll do that. But, but if we look, if we look fine, if, you know, um, then, then can we just forget this stuff? And he said, yeah, well, let's do that. Ten days later, ten days later. Uh, so he consented with them, verse 14, um, over this matter and tested them ten days. And at the end of ten days, their features appeared better and fatter in flesh than all the young men who ate the portion of the king's delicacies. So the steward said, okay, that's enough of that. Verse 17, as for these four, so this is Shadrach, or this is um, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Okay, the four friends, they're all roommates. And, and uh, um, as for these four young men, God gave them, say God gave them. God gave them. This, this is another part of winning. God gives us stuff. Gives us stuff. He gave them. What did He give them? God gave them knowledge and skill and all literature and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding and all visions and dreams. Now at the end of the days when the king had uh, um, said that they should be brought in and the chief of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar, that the king interviewed them and among them all, none was found like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore, they served before the king. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding about which the king examined them, he found them ten times. Say ten times. Ten times better. Hallelujah. We can be ten times better. We can have receiving from God wisdom and knowledge and understanding, skill. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Winners. That's who we are. We become more valuable than others even though just because we serve Him, just because we stand on His side, He can give us skill that we didn't have before. He can give us knowledge and understanding that we didn't have before. He can, he can give it to us in three weeks that someone had to study three years for. God can give it to us. Hallelujah. He can open doors. He can make favor. He can cause us to get in when others haven't been able to get in. Away. Glory to God. Favor, knowledge, skill, wisdom, ten times better. He found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers who were in all his realm. Thus Daniel continued until the first year of King Cyrus. In other words, there's four kings he served under. Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar's son, Belshazzar, and then Darius, and then Cyrus. Four kings. Because of what God did for him. Chapter 2. Now in the second year of Nebuchadnezzar's reign, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams, and the spirit was so, his spirit was so troubled that his sleep left him. And the king gave the command to call the magicians and astrologers and sorcerers and the Chaldeans uh, to tell the king his dreams. So they came and stood before the king. And the king said to them, I have had a dream, and my spirit is anxious to know the dream, the interpretation. And the Chaldeans spoke to the king in Aramaic, O king, live forever. Tell your servants the dream, and we will give the interpretation. And the king answered and said to the Chaldeans, My decision is firm. If you do not make known the dream to me and its interpretation, you shall be all cut to pieces, and your houses shall be made an ash heap. I'll chop you in pieces and I'll burn your house down. So there. However, if you tell the dream and its interpretation, you shall receive from me gifts, rewards, and great honor. Therefore, tell me the dream and its interpretation. And they looked to one another and said, oh, What? Let the king tell his servants the dream, and we will give you its interpretation. He said, I know the certain, uh, for certain that you would gain, you're, you're just trying to get some time, gain some time. You're just trying to, hmm. But you see that my decision is firm. You're just trying to, you're just trying to get some time. You're just trying to save some time. You're just... If you do not, verse 9, if you do not make known the dream to me, there is only one decree for you. For you have agreed to speak lies and corrupt words before me to te uh, uh, till the time has changed. So you've decided to lie to me and just tell me something just to gain time for yourself. You know? Oh yeah, well in 50 years this is going to happen. That gives us 50 years to go, whew. No. 
He said, I, I, I know you're, you're just wanting to, to speak lies and corrupt words before me till the time has changed. Therefore, tell me the dream, and I will know that you can give me the interpretation. I'll know for sure. The Chaldeans answered the king and said that there's, there's not a man on earth who can tell the king's matter. Therefore, no king or lord or ruler has, has ever, never, ever, ever, ever has asked such a thing of any magician, astrologer, or Chaldean. It's, it's a difficult thing that the king requests. And there is no other, there's no one who can tell it to the king except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. The gods don't live here. The only one can tell you that are the gods. We, 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 we don't visit with them. We don't know them. We don't have any contact with them. They, they don't talk with us. They don't live here. And the king got furious. Nebuchadnezzar, for this reason, the king was angry and very furious and gave the command to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. So the decree went out and they began killing the wise men and they sought Daniel and his companions, his roommates, uh, to kill them. Then, the, uh, then, the, then the, with counsel and wisdom, Daniel answered Arioch, and, uh, Arioch uh, the captain of the king's guard, who has gone out to kill the wise men of Babylon. And he answered and said to Arioch, the king's uh, captain, Why is the decree from the king so urgent? And Arioch made the decision known to Daniel. So Daniel went in and asked the king to give him time that he might tell the king the interpretation. Then Daniel went to his house and he made the decision known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions or his roommates, that they might seek mercies from the God of heaven concerning this secret so that Daniel and his companions might not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then the secret was revealed to Daniel in the night vision. So Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Look at this. Daniel answered and said, Whoo! Blessed be the name of God forever and ever and ever and ever. Glory to God. For wisdom and might are yours. And, and you change the times and the seasons. And he, he removes kings and he raises up kings. He removes presidents and he, 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 he puts in presidents. And, and those that pretend and cheat to get into presidency, they don't get to stay in presidency. Glory to God forevermore. Hallelujah. He, he, he removes kings and he raises up kings. Glory to God. And he gives wisdom to the wise and the knowledge of those who have understanding. And he reveals deep secrets, uh, the, the deep and secret things, and he knows what is in the darkness, and light dwells with him. I thank you and praise you, O oh God of my fathers. I have given, uh, uh, you have given me wisdom and might, and, and have made known to me what we asked of you. You, you, for you have made known to us the king's demand. Therefore, verse 24, Daniel went to Arioch and, and the, the uh, um, whom the king had appointed to destroy the wise men of Babylon. And he went in and said to him, Do not destroy the wise men of Babylon. Take me to the king, and I will tell the king the interpretation. And Arioch quickly brought Daniel before the king and said thus to him, I have found a man of the captives of Judah who, have made no, uh, uh, who will make known to the king the interpretation. And the king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar. He, ch he, changed, he changed all their names. Daniel's name was Belteshazzar. Then there was Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, which are Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And so he says to Daniel, Are you able to make known to me the dream which I have seen and its interpretation? And Daniel really doesn't answer his question. Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king has demanded, the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, and the soothsayers, cannot declare to the king. Nobody knows it. Nobody knows it. All the people you put your trust and confidence in, they don't know it. They don't know nothing. But. <laughs> but. But there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets, and he has made known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what will be in the latter days. Your dream and the visions of your head upon the bed were these. As for you, O king, thoughts came to your mind while on your bed about what would come to pass after these... Uh, uh, after the, and I'm going to read through the dream. I mean, we, we'll just keep going here. He said, these were the thoughts that were running through your head. And he who reveals secrets has made known to you what he will, what, what will be, in other words, in regards to the future. But as for me, this secret has not been revealed to me because I have more wisdom than anyone living. But for our sakes, who made known the interpretation of the king, and that you may know the thoughts of your heart. He said, there's two reasons why it was revealed to me. Not because I'm so smart. Number one, 
for my sake, for our sake, right, him and his roommates, that we might live. God revealed it to us to keep us alive. And number two, he revealed it to you so you would know. In other words, God's in the win-win business. Amen? God is not in a win-lose business. God's always in a win-win business. He's for everyone. He's good. He's good and His mercy endures forever. So God uh, revealed it to him. So he goes on to say, As for you, O king, the thoughts came to your mind. While you were on your bed, and you would come to pass that this... Uh, verse 31. O king, you were watching and behold a great image, this great image whose splendor was excellent, stood before you, and its form was awesome. And the image head was of gold, its chest and arms of silver, and its belly and thighs of bronze, and its legs of iron, and its feet were partly iron and partly clay. And you watched while a stone was cut out without hands, which struck the image on its feet of iron and clay and broke them to pieces. Then the iron and the clay and the bronze and the silver and the gold were crushed together and became like chaff from the summer threshing floor. And the wind carried them away, so that no trace of them was found. And the stone that struck the image became a great mountain, and filled the whole earth. This is the dream. Now we will tell the interpretation of it before the king. You, O king, are the king of kings, and, with, uh, and from the, uh, the God of heaven has given you a kingdom, power, strength, and glory. And wherever the children of men dwell, or the beasts of the field and the birds of the, of the heaven, he has given them into your hand and has made you ruler over them all. You are this head of gold. But after you shall arise another kingdom inferior to yours, then another third kingdom of bronze, which shall rule over all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be as strong as iron, inasmuch as iron breaks in pieces and splatters or shatters everything. And like iron that crushes, that kingdom will break in pieces and crush all others. Whereas you saw the feet and the toes, partly of potter's clay and partly of iron, the kingdom shall be divided Yet the strength of the iron shall be in it, just as you saw the iron mixed with the, the ceramic clay. And as the toes of the feet were partly iron and partly clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly fragile. As you saw iron mixed with ceramic clay, they will mingle with the seed of men, but they will not adhere to one another, just as iron does not mix with clay. And in the days of these kings, the God of heaven, the God of heaven... In these days, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Inasmuch as you saw that the stone was cut out of the mountain and without hands, and that it broke in pieces the iron, the bronze, and the clay, and the silver, and the gold, and the, gra and the great God has made known to the king that there uh, will come to pass after this. What will come to pass after this? The dream is certain and its interpretation is sure. And King Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face before Daniel. <laughs> the king bowed to Daniel. Kings have people bow down to them, but he bowed down before Daniel. He fell on his face prostrate before Daniel and commanded that he should present an offering and incense to him. The king answered Daniel and said, Truly your God is the God of gods and the Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets. Since you could reveal this secret, then the king, the king did what? He did what? He did what? Promoted. He did what? Promoted. Let's say it again. What? Promoted. One more time. Promoted. He promoted Daniel. And gave him many great gifts and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief administrator over all the wise men of Babylon. And Daniel petitioned the king and he set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of uh, the province of Babylon. But Daniel uh, sat in the gate of the king. So, chapter 2, we see this. Daniel says this, there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets. He's giving glory to God. We give glory to God. Hallelujah. Verse 30. He's the one who revealed to me for our sake and for yours. Win-win. Verse 46 to 49. He glorified God. Nebuchadnezzar glorified God. He testified and gave glory to God. Your God is the God of gods. He, there's no one that can do this, but he did. Your God is amazing. 
And then he did what? He promoted. Promoted. Daniel's winning. He's a captive. Yet he made a choice to not defile himself. He got into the presence of God and got the answers. He gave God glory and revealed the answers. And God's promoting him. God will promote us. And then he had influence to where he was able to have his roommates brought in and promoted also. Chapter 3. Nebuchadnezzar Nezer made an image of gold whose height was 60 cubits, about 90 feet tall. That's about the height of an eight or nine story building. And about six cubits or nine feet wide. And he called all the leaders and said, you need to come to the inauguration, the ceremony of this big statue, this big idol that we're making. And, and when you hear the symphony play, you need to bow down and worship it. And if you don't do that, I'm going to throw you into the burning fiery furnace. Why? I, I don't know. You know, when you've got nothing to do, you've got nothing to do. You just come up with, you know, some games. Let's just build this big thing and, and just, you know what? mess with the people and you know you don't bow we're gonna let's just fry somebody you know so it's um it's just why i it's just weird but it's what happened and and some of the guys you know they've been training to 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 be in places of um leadership and influence and and somehow these hananiah michel and azariah you know they just kind of got here you know these newbies, and, and they're, now they're in charge of us. They didn't like that. And so when the symphony started to play, everyone bowed except Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. And, and, and so they decided to go tattle. They went to the king, and they said, didn't you say, you know what, everyone needs to bow, and if they don't bow, they're going to go get burned. And he said, yes. He said, well, the, the, the Hebrew guys, the ones you just you know, promoted, you know, they're, 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 not, they're not paying attention to you. They're disrespecting you. They're not bowing. He said, what? Get them in here. And so he called them in there. And I'm Mishael Azariah. And he said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, is what, I, what am I hearing is true? Let's read it. Verse 15. Now, if you are ready at the time to hear the sound of the horn, the, the, the harp, the lyre, the psalm trees in symphony, you know, so if you're, gonna, if you're ready to bow when the symphony starts to play in, um, all the music, then and you and and you fall down and worship the image with uh, which I have um, made. Great, good, all is well. We'll just forget this meeting ever happened. You know, we just done. We're done. But, you know, we'll just forget it. All is well, not a problem. But <coughs> excuse me. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you? from my hands. So now, this is the threat. Say threat. This is the threat. The next couple verses is the response to the threat. Religion has got it confused. But the next, the next, few, cha next, few, the next few verses are the response to the threat. The threat is, if you don't bow, I'm going to throw you in the burning fiery furnace. Right? That's the threat. You don't bow. You don't worship. I'm going to throw you in the burning fiery furnace. That's the response. So when we read the response, we need to read the response based on the threat. They said, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, that, say that. Yeah. That is referring to the threat. If that, if you throw us in the furnace, if you throw us in the furnace, the threat, if you throw us in the furnace, our God who we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will. No doubt about it. He's able to and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, now see religion uses this but if not and tags it to their being delivered by God. But the if not is tied to the threat. 
but religion's confused. Because religion is not sure if God will. <laughs> religion is not sure about the will of God. Sometimes he does, sometimes he doesn't. You never know what God's going to do. This is what they teach. The, no, this is, this is literally false doctrine. The response is to the threat. Once again, verse 17. If that's the case, if you throw us in the furnace, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. And if you don't throw us in the furnace, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not ever, ever, ever serve your gods, nor will we worship the golden image which you have set up. And it made Nebuchadnezzar furious. They said, if you're just trying to scare us, we're not, going, we're not scared. We will never serve your gods or bow to your images. Our God will deliver us. And if you don't throw us in because you're trying to scare us, we're not scared. We will never. Ever. What are they doing? They're declaring whose side they're on. There's a shaking going on. And people are caving. But these three guys, you notice Daniel wasn't invited. Daniel wasn't invited. But Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah were called in because they were one of the leaders. They chose. We side, we're on God's side. We choose his word. He said, the word says that fire won't even touch us. We believe God. And he, the word says, we worship God and serve him only. Right? The devil tempted Jesus with that. Just bow down and worship me. I'll give you everything you want. He said, it's written, you shall serve the Lord, worship the Lord your God only. And he'll give me everything I want. <laughs> Amen? Choose inside. Choose inside. They chose God's side. It's a test. It's a test. It's a test. There's a shaking going on in our lives. There's a shaking going on in our nation. There's a shaking going on. Whose side are we picking? Because the side we pick determine, determines whether we win or we lose. We're talking about winning. And so they made this great grand faith statement, this declaration. And you'd think, you know, this is a great time for, for the king to finally go, ah. You're right, that's, forget it. No, that's all right. No, 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 no. He got furious. He said, turn the heat up seven times more. And you guys, go grab three or more of top, top military guys, tie them up, and throw them in the furnace. They're going to the furnace. It's a good time to, good time to be delivered. Good time to be freed out now, God. You know, we, we kind of think that this is, this, is, this is God's deliverance didn't come now as we would hope. This is a good time to be free, delivered. You know, all of a sudden, you know, send the hail. Lord, send something and, and you know, kill the guys, have them drop dead and, so we can run away. No, no, no. They declared, our God is able, our God will, and we will never serve your, your gods. And so they're bound in their clothes. Took them in and they threw them in the furnace. But the furnace is so hot that the guys that threw them in the furnace were killed. And Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah. The Bible says in verse 24, uh, verse 23. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and arose in haste and spoke and said, didn't we throw three? Yeah. Well, look, I see four men loosed walking in the midst of the fire and the, they're not hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the son of God. And so Nebuchadnezzar literally had to go down and he had to call them out of the fire. Nobody hangs out in the fire. 
we did a giant wiener roast. I had, I had chopped a whole bunch of trees down in my yard in the parsonage and, and when I was pastoring in Sarnia and had this big pile of dry branches and we lit them on fire and we're going to have a wiener roast. Well, the pile, the pile was probably from there to here and, and it was probably just almost that round. It was so hot we couldn't even really get close to it. We were finally able to get a little bit close and just kind of pull a little pile out from the big pile that we could roast our wieners on and our marshmallows. You're not trying to get in the fire. And you get close enough, you, 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 get, you get your hands out of there. When I was young, we did a wiener roast, and I decided to clean my coat hanger off with my hand that had already been in the fire. Psst. Ah! You know? I mean, you don't just hold on and go, Oh, what's that I smell burning? No, you go, Psst! Ah! Immediately. It's just hot. Woo! You know? I burnt myself. So, um, learn you don't do that. Don't do, don't do that again. Note to self, don't do that again. Not a smart thing. So, but these guys, are they, they're in the fire. They're still in the fire. They're still, they're hanging out in the fire. They're loosed and they're walking in the fire. There's something about that fourth person that made the fire irrelevant. David said, just, just, just let me be a doorman in the presence of the Lord. There's just, just, just something about your presence. All the days of my life, just to dwell in your presence. There's nothing compared. And they're in his presence, in the middle of the fire. And the king had to interrupt them. And call them out. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. Servants of the Most High God. Yeah, he said, who's, who's the God will deliver you now? now? Now he knows who. Now he knows who. Servants of the Most High God come out here. And all the leaders, the satraps, the, the, the administrators, the governors, the king's council, they gathered together and they saw these, four, these, these, these men, three men, on whom their bodies, the fire, had no power. The hair on their head was not singed, nor were their garments affected, and the smell of fire was not on them. They didn't even smell like smoke. Look at this. Nebuchadnezzar spoke saying, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him. Once again, Nebuchadnezzar is beginning to testify of what he saw. This is his testimony. They chose to serve their God, and he delivered them. They trusted him, and they have frustrated the king's words and yielded their bodies that they should not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make a decree that any people, nation, or tongue which speaks against amiss against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces. He likes us cut in pieces. I would just cut you in pieces. Would you cut you in, we'll cut you in pieces and burn your house down. Cut you in, and I he says this again. They'll be cut in pieces and their houses will be turned into an ash heap. Just cut, to the, just cut the people in pieces and burn their house down. He likes that. Because there is no other God who can deliver like this. Then the king, then the king what? Promoted. Then the king what? Promoted. Then the king what? Promoted. One more time. Promoted. He promoted Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego in the province of Babylon. Isn't that something? Once again, the threat... The response, God delivered, came not when they figured it. The deliverance came in the fire. And the result, the result was a result of trust which led to promotion. A result of trust. Their deliverance was a result of trust and it brought promotion. If we choose God's side to bring trust. We, 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 we trust God positions us to be a God's side. We're on God's side. We trust Him. We trust His words. It will bring promotion. Amen? Chapter 6. Chapter 6 says it pleased Darius. So, another king. Two kings later. Nebuchadnezzar's son's already come and gone. Darius has taken over. 
Belshazzar was assassinated. And Darius the Medes received the kingdom, at verse 31 of chapter 5, being about 62 years old. And it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom. Okay. Right. It, to set over the kingdom 120 satraps to be over the whole kingdom. And over these 120, three governors of whom Daniel was one, that the satraps might give account to them so that the king should suffer no loss. So Daniel was one of the three that was over the 120. Then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and satraps because an excellent spirit was in him. We need to have an excellent spirit in us. An excellent spirit is a spirit that's honest, and they, uh, one that's trustworthy, one that's faithful, one that's committed, one, one that um, uh, doesn't lie, one that doesn't cheat, one that has honesty and integrity. An excellent spirit is one that does things well. Well. Works well with people. This is, this is, this is the kind of people our bosses want. People with excellent spirits. This is, this is the people the bosses want working for them, right? This is, as employers, this is what the, who we want working for us. And as employees, this is what our bosses are looking for in us. We ought to be men and women of excellent spirit. Why? Because this is, we serve God. We're on God's side. This is a witness. This is a, this is a, this is a demonstration of who we serve. We don't, we don't work for them. We work as unto the Lord. Their check, their name might go on our check, but we're working as unto the Lord. Amen? And so because he had an excellent spirit in him, the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm. So the governors and satraps sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could uh, find no charge or fault because he was faithful nor was there any error or fault found in him. So they came up with a plan. And they went before the king and said, King, this, we, we, we think this, this is a good idea. If, if you just do a 30-day, a, a 30-day, anybody that prays and worships anyone but you, they are throwing in the lion's den. We, we, we've been talking and we, just, we think it's a good idea. You know, it's, it, it, it'll, it'll help make sure it's in your benefit to know who's faithful to you, you know. I mean, he said, sure, that's a good idea. Then, verse 10, Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home, and in his upper f uh, room, with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees, three times that day, and prayed and gave thanks before his God, and as was his custom since the early days. And then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplications before his God, and they went to the king and said, Hey, Daniel's, Dan Daniel's, Daniel's praying. And the king went, Oh, man. I, I, it's, just, it's just stupid. That was just stupid, stupid, stupid plan. He liked Daniel. You read it. He liked Daniel. He spent the whole day trying to get Daniel out. So they answered and said, And the king, when he heard these words, was greatly displeased with, verse 14, with himself, and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him, and he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. And these men approached the king and said, Now, king, it's the law of the Medes and the Persians that no decree of the king established may be changed. So the king gave the command, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. But the king spoke, saying to Daniel, Your God, whom you serve continually, he will deliver you. Then the stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the signets of his lords, uh, that the purpose concerning Daniel might not be changed. Now the king went to his palace and spent the night fasting, and no musicians were brought before him. Also his sleep went from him. <coughs> and then the king arose early in the morning and went in haste, quickly. He ran to the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried out. He yelled with a, a lamenting voice to Daniel. The king spoke, concern, uh, saying to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the, the living God, has your God whom you serve continually been able to deliver you from the lions? 
and from in the, the, the den. You could hear Daniel's voice, O king, live forever! For God has sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth, so they have not hurt me, but because I was found innocent before him. And also, O king, I have done no wrong before you. Now the king was exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel out of the den. And so Daniel was taken out of the den, and no injury was upon him, found on him because he believed in his God. He chose God's side. And the king gave commandment. This, this is the, the next breath out of the king. And the king gave commandment that they brought those men who had uh, accused Daniel. And they cast them into the, the den of lions. Them, their children, and their wives. It does not pay to side with the wrong people. Their wives didn't do nothing. Their children didn't do nothing. But they got the same result. People go to jail not because they necessarily did something. They were just hanging out with the wrong people that went to jail. So they all went to jail. Their whole family was thrown in. And the, and the lions overpowered them and broke all their bones in pieces before they ever came to the bottom of the den. And the king wrote to all people, nations, languages uh, that dwell on the earth, peace. Be multiplied to you. I make a decree that in every dominion in my kingdom, men uh, must tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and steadfast forever, and his kingdom is the one which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall endure to the end, and he delivers and rescues, and he works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth, who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. So Daniel, pro he did what? Prospered. He did what? Prospered. He did what? Prospered. Glory to God. In the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. So, what do we see here? Daniel broke. There was a 30-day manipulation propaganda law. <clears throat> Daniel broke it to obey God. He didn't care. He broke that propaganda manipulation law um, and obeyed God and believed God for protection and God delivered him from the lions. So, in conclusion, the shaking is a test and it is designed to reveal who's on the Lord's side. Amen? Those who, chose to believe, those who chose to believe His unshakable right way of doing things, to hold fast to Him and serve Him. It's a test designed to reveal those who are on the Lord's side. Those on the, the ones who are on the Lord's side are the ones who choose to believe His unshakable right way of doing things. Hold fast to Him and serve Him. Those who are on the Lord's side are the ones who really love Him. Keep His words, are not afraid, because He's coming back. Hallelujah. Amen? Therefore, we win. We triumph. We are victorious. We overcome. Because when we live life on His side, He stands up for us. Glory to God. Justice. That's what it's called. Justice. Justice. There's a sound of an abundance of rain for all of us who are on His side. God setting things right, making things right, and putting things right for us. Amen? There's a sound of an abundance of rain. Glory to God.